Hello there guys, welcome back to my channel and this is your teacher, Teacher Daryl Del Mundo. So today, I will teach you how to make an ISIM. But before that, this topic is all about how to set up your developer tab in your PowerPoint presentation. So basically, you cannot find the developer tab on your PowerPoint presentation. But today, I will teach you how to set it up and differentiate and to know more about this ISIM or Interactive Strategic Instructional or Intervention Material. So let's start. Are you ready? Okay. So uh, to start with, in making ISIM, you can use the following. So uh, you can use of the animations, you can use of the actions, and you can use of the applications, which includes the visual basic application. So later on, we will uh, dig more about this three A's, okay? So let us start tackle what ISIM is. This is a learning material made only in PowerPoint presentation. It's very available if you have your Microsoft Office or luckily, and we are blessed because of the Department of Education provided us an account for the Microsoft Office 365. It's for free, but uh, you know, uh, you need to pay for it, but the DepEd gave us for free. And also, an upgrade of SIM, okay? Or an upgrade of an ordinary PowerPoint lecture type. And then, it includes also the student's response and interaction because as you are going to make your iSIM, that's why it is called interactive because there's a response, okay? An interaction between the teacher, the PowerPoint, or your presentation, and even the students, okay? And also can be accessed offline. So since you are done in, in, in a PowerPoint presentation, you can save it in your flash drive or in your uh, thumb drive. It can be used through offline, okay? Even if you don't have the internet, it's okay. And then it's enjoyable and fun to learn. See, we are, uh, we are going to bring our students in a, in a holistic dimension, in a different dimension. Okay, holistic meaning to say they are like learning and at the same time enjoying the games as they go on to each topic, as they go on to each discussion and activities. Okay, so let us first differentiate iSIM from SIM. Okay, so SIM, as we all know, the strategic intervention material and iSIM as the interactive strategic instructional material. We know that SIM is printable. Okay, more consumption of papers and ink requires book mind, can be manipulated by hands. If you know, there's a lot of things that uh, SIM uh, can do or what are the other things that uh, we can consider in the SIM group. And then the iSIM can be stored in a flash drive or in your jump drive or in your hard drive, something like that. And paperless learning material, we know that. And uh, more on games run by animations, like what I said a while ago, animations, actions, and applications, the VBA. And then can be manipulated by mouse. If you have your Bluetooth, much better. If you have your ordinary, that's good. And if you have your laptop, it's okay too. Okay? And let's go to the pros and cons of the ISIM. So the pros and cons of the ISIM, let's start with the pros digitally stored. So you do not have a lot of papers for you to store it in, in your desk or in your table, something like that. And paperless, okay? ICT integrated as it is, it, in, uh, it is included in the K-12 curriculum already. And interactive, user-friendly. So remember that our children, our students are digitally natives, okay? They are digitally inclined already. And the cons are the PowerPoint literacy or familiarization. So not all of us, especially some of the teachers and some of the students are not literate when it comes uh, to PowerPoint or they are not familiar with the PowerPoint. The functions, something like that, the different icons that they can see in the window of the PowerPoint and availability of Microsoft PowerPoint presentation. If you do not have your MS Office, it's a... Uh, Kind of challenge for us and coding oh no in vba because in coding you are like an it expert you need to code and code and code especially the macros okay 
And then developer icons configuration. There are a lot of icons that you can see in the developer tab. Okay, so uh, rest assured that you're not going to confuse about it. Okay, and laptops memory storage. You need a large memory storage of your laptop. Okay, if you didn't have it, uh, might as well you have your backup such as your hard drive and your big storage jump drive or your flash drive. Okay, so in animations, you can use it also, like what I've said, this is one animation. So you can see there in the toolbar, the, the one with the star, okay? The one with the different stars, it means uh, how to enter the different images and uh, letters and numbers and uh, the emphasis and then the exit, or you can uh, modify it, okay? Motion path, something like that. So make a combination of different animations to create a game in an interesting way. So for example, you can make a quiz out of it, okay? You can make a revealing box, okay, a type of game, and you can make a shooting game and many more. You just need to explore and you need to be creative. You need to open your mind as much as possible. And action. So action, you can see it in the toolbar in the insert part. Okay, insert, it is included with link and hyperlink. Okay, you can see there with the star box, and then you can see what's inside is the star. So link and hyperlink, this is for you to connect from one slide to another slide or to some videos or other links. Okay, be a YouTube or website, something like that. And then actions can also run the macro in the developer tab. Remember, Action, give the selected object an action to carry out when you click it or mouse over it. So remember the cursor, you can mouse over it, yeah. and then you can also like click it, something like that. Because you can make a maze game here, okay? You know the maze game? Okay, you can include it in your iSIM. So that is action, okay? And then the visual basic application, so or the B BBA. Okay, in the application part. So Visual Basic application runs as internal programming language in Microsoft Office, such as uh, Excel, PowerPoint, and many more in Access, and Publisher, Word, and Visual. Okay? VBA allows users to customize beyond what is normally available with MS Office host applications. VBA is not standalone program. By manipulating graphical user interface or GUI, Features such as toolbars, menus, dialog boxes, and forms. You may use VBA to create user-defined functions or UDFs. Access Windows application, programming interfaces or API, and automate specific computer processes and calculations. So basically, this is the technical part of the VBA, the IT part of the VBA. You need to code, 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 and codes. Uh, the symbols are very important. The macros are very important. The coding are very important here in this part. It's very crucial. So we need to stay focused and you need to learn it by heart and by mind. Okay? So in macro, in Visual Basic application, a macro is a, essentially a sequence of characters whose input results in another sequence of characters. It's output. So you need to input. Okay? You can see there the window of the macro or in the VBA. You type there the codes, the input, and then when you apply it, you can see the output that accomplishes the specific computing task or whatever it is. Okay? You do not need to purchase the VBA software because VBA is the version of Visual Basic that ships with Microsoft Office 2010. Okay? So, let us uh, be familiarized with the different parts of the PowerPoint window. So, at the top of it, you can see the title bar, okay? Then, the second layer is the quick access toolbar, okay? And then, the third layer are the toolbars. So, when you click the quick access toolbar, okay, it's uh, for you to uh, click it easily, to find them easily. And then, when you go to the toolbar, you can see the specification or the each icon that you can use for you to make your own PowerPoint presentation. And then you can see there the file tab on your upper left when you are facing your computer. So in your uh, file tab, you can see a lot of uh, save there, open, and new, 
and then options, okay? And this uh, part on your left side, you can see there the slight pane. And then on your right side, the biggest part, okay, on your right side is a placeholder. So you can uh, see there the middle, the title, and then the add subtitle, okay? Those are the placeholders. And that part is the slide, okay? That part is the slide. And then at the bottom of it, you can see the status bar and then the ribbon. Okay, so we need to familiarize with it so that you will not be confused when you are using your PowerPoint presentation. Okay? And now, to set up the developer tab, this is the four steps that you need to know. Four steps only. Let's get started. Number one, go to the file tab. So as you can see, when you go up there, you will see the file tab. Okay? Here, the file tab. Click it. When you click it, you can see there at the bottom of it is the option button, okay? Click the option button, and then when you click the option button, you will see there another window will pop up, PowerPoint option, the customized ribbon, okay, here. And then in the customized ribbon on your right, scroll down and you will see the developer checkbox. And then don't forget to check the checkbox, okay? And then click OK. When you click OK, go back to the window of the PowerPoint and you can see here the developer tab. And when you click the developer tab, these are all the icons that you can see. We have here the controls, the codes, and some modifications or modifies and add options or add controls. So, uh, those are the four steps that you need to bear in your mind in setting up your developer tab. It's very, very important. Okay, to uh, summarize how to set up the developer tab, number one, go to file, then select options. And then number two, find customized ribbon or customized ribbon. Then click the developer checkbox. Then number four, check the PowerPoint window and look for the developer tab in the toolbar. And then enjoy and have a self-study on how to use the developer tab in using VBA, okay, or the Visual Basic Application, and enjoy learning ICT as a teacher so that we can cater the needs of our students when it comes to virtual learning. And uh, next time, I will teach you how to make an iSIM in an application. Okay, we will apply everything in animation, in action, and also in visual basic application. I will teach you a simple coding about it and then explore it. Thank you so much for watching. This is your teacher, Teacher Daryl Del Mundo. Bye. It's so fun to learn.